I not easy thing to swim, but <laughs> I had to learn how to swim to teach those kids how to swim. Capacity building, not an easy thing. Uh, the last thing you want to see is the child that is drowning in the water and gulping seven cups of water. Not going to be fun. Praise the Lord. You are the doctor. Can you ever say, if your father tell them you are the doctor, you are the teacher, you are everything to your family. God is calling you to be what? Everything to your family. That's before I move to point number two. I remember getting a call from my daughter's school. It was a, an emergency call. My daughter had gone down, slumped in the bathroom, and uh, was in a very difficult situation. The teachers knew she was sick, and something was not going well. So a call came from the teacher, your daughter is not feeling well. But right this time, she was in the bathroom and couldn't even help herself, couldn't even carry herself, was just there on the floor. And I get that call. And I wondered for a moment, they didn't call the emergency service, and they're calling me. Will she make it alive? Will she still be alive before I get there? Because the way she sounded, I know this is not my daughter. And I got to the school. I became like that emergency service person. Getting to school, and I, they managed to break into the bathroom where she was. It was only her phone on the floor, managing to still try to communicate. Helpless, powerless, couldn't stand. And all I saw was, of course, the bathroom. We got there. We had to wheel her in the wheelchair and get her in the vehicle. I literally had to carry her into the vehicle. Can you imagine carrying a very big girl like that? Strength came from nowhere, carried her into the vehicle. But it still didn't say, nothing came, can you call emergency service? And I carried her home. I'm like, do I call the hospital? What do I do at this moment? My wife was there with everybody. She just couldn't, she was just going. But thanks be to God, at that point, thank God for the faith that came, out, that came within me. And I, we began to pray with, uh, pray with her, pray for her, pray. And God, restore her life, restore her, bring her back to, bring her back to strength, bring her back to capacity. And before we knew, the Lord began to resuscitate her life. And the Lord brought her back to functionality. Praise the Lord. Never saw that before. But suddenly, the father aspect the doctor aspect of being a, the, the father attributes of being like a doctor and every and that person you may wonder why didn't you call emergency why didn't you call this and that but i did what was necessary i could not stand a, losing a child but thanks be to god we had victory and that child came back to functionality praise the lord so the times even as a father you you make the sacrifices you find yourself uh, I'm not saying you should do the same thing like I did, you know, uh, you know, but there's situations where, you know, before the emergency people will even respond, at, why is the school not calling emergency people? And why did they call me? And so I had to be the emergency person. Praise the Lord. I pray in the time of emergency, you rise up for your family in Jesus' name. Most importantly, in the spiritual realm, you step up. You not be missing in action. You not be missing in battle, but you be there to defend your family, to stand up for your family, in Jesus' name, forgiveness, the boundless mercy of Christ. Forgiveness, the boundless mercy of Christ. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Matthew 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Verse 22. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until what? Seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. And seventy times seven is what, everybody? 490 times. Very, and no human being will offend you 490 times. It's just saying function, flow in grace. Flow in love. Basically, just be ready for anything. Let nothing move you. Let nothing upset you. Live your life. Be very simple in your life, in the way you live your life. Be ready to even accommodate, adjust, reset when it comes to dealings with people. Because the last 
thing you will want to happen to you is to miss heaven because of another person. How miserable it will be. I pray that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Let's consider the parable of the merciful servant in Matthew chapter 18. Look at verse 23. Matthew, the same Matthew 18, verse 23. We see here an unforgiving servant here who owes a massive debt, begs his master for mercy, and is forgiven. However, he later refuses to do what? To forgive a fellow servant who owes him a small amount. When the master hears of this, he is so furious and reinstates the first servant's debt. This parable highlights the importance of extending forgiveness that we have received from God to others. Tell, turn to your neighbor and say, I will extend forgiveness to others. Even as Christ and God forgave. Let's look at that place, uh, verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which will take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one of, uh, began to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Before as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Verse 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of, the, of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Verse 28, everybody read with me. Verse 28, everybody. But this same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he will not, but went and cast him into prison till he suddenly should pay, till he should pay the debt. And so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told all that to their Lord, all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all the debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on the fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Let's not play politics with forgiveness. The Lord is saying it has to. It should come from the heart. Can I hear you say that? It should come from the heart. Let it be real, the Bible is saying. And if the grace is not there, ask the Lord for the grace because your penalty will be too much if you don't forgive those that have offended you as Christ has forgiven us. Forgive freely. Christ forgave freely. Demonstrate forgiveness in your relationship with your family members. Show the family. Show people. Show the people within the family. Show your children. Show your wife that holding grudges is not the path for a follower of Christ. You have to demonstrate it. Teach it. Teach forgiveness. Encourage your children to forgive each other. Don't pitch them against themselves. Encourage them to forbear. Encourage them to forgive one another. Encourage them to seek reconciliation and ensure that it's done when things have gone wrong in their relationship. Let's consider there was uh, an incident that happened, and this mirrors the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. In a small town, there lived a man named Jacob, a loving father and a dedicated of Christ. Jacob had a son named Michael who, like many young people, found himself caught in the complexities of growing up. Michael was a bright boy with dreams of adventure. Whereas he entered his teenage years, he began to rebel against his father's guidance. Jacob loved his son dearly and tried his best to guide him on the right path. 
he will share wisdom from the Bible. He will remind him about the importance of following Christ, living a life of integrity and faith. But Michael was determined to find his own way, even if it meant going against his father's wishes. One day, in a fit of anger and frustration, Michael decided to leave home. He told his father that he needed to live his own life, free from the constraints of his upbringing. Jacob, that's Michael's father, his heart was broken as he watched his son pack his belongings and walk out of the door. But he knew that sometimes love meant letting go. Months turned into years, and Jacob prayed daily for his son's safety and return. Despite the heartache, Jacob never harbored anger or resentment. Instead, he held on to the hope that God will one day bring Michael back. Michael's journey was far from easy. And you all know it's never an easy thing to be a man, to be a father, to live like a father, to pay bills. He struggled to make ends meet. He faced countless hardships and then soon realized that life away from home was not the adventure he had imagined. He felt lost and burdened by the weight of his choices. The world had not been kind to him, and he longed for the comfort and love of his family again. One cold, rainy evening, weary and filled with regret, Michael made the decision to return home. He was ashamed and afraid of his father's reaction. How could he face the man he had hurt so deeply? As Michael approached the familiar road leading to his childhood home, his heart pounded with fear and uncertainty. It wasn't going to be easy, but what he saw next filled his eyes with tears. There at the end of the road stood his father, Jacob, waiting patiently. Jacob's face lit up with joy as he saw his son approaching. Without hesitation, he ran to Michael, embracing him with all the love and warmth a father's heart could muster. The rain poured down, but in that moment, it felt like a shower of God's grace. Michael, overwhelmed with guilt, began to apologize. Father, I'm so sorry for everything. I don't deserve your love. Of forgiveness. Jacob, it's Michael's father with tears streaming down his face, held his son tight. My dear Michael, he said, I have already forgiven you. There is nothing you can do to make me stop loving you. Just as our heavenly father forgives us, brethren, he said, I forgive you. Then he welcomed him home. In that embrace, Michael felt a deeper burden lifted from his soul. He understood, and perhaps, of course, for the first time he understood this, the depth of his father's love and the power of forgiveness. It wasn't just about letting go of the past. It was about the healing that was to come, the restoration that was to come, and the unconditional love that reflects the heart of God. So many times we're not willing to let go of the past. But it's about the healing that is going to come in that situation. The stability that will come to that young man, that young woman, for generations to come, for times to come. It's about the recovery that will come to that life. The father understood this. You know, that was exactly what happened in the case of the prodigal son, which provides a powerful example of forgiveness. Despite the son's rebellion, wasteful living, the father embraced him with open arms. Let's look at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Talk the Bible with me to Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, I read verse 11. The Bible says here, and he said, a certain man had two sons. 
The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. He divided unto them his living. Verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his, of course, after many days, they, after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. Guys, just talk to our, our younger ones today. Something you don't, what you don't labor for, you don't value. Praise the Lord. What did I say? What you don't labor for, you don't value. And that's why as fathers, let's teach our children the process of to greatness, the virtue of humility, the virtue of patience that we're talking about today, the virtue of waiting for the right timing in life, the virtue of waiting till you're ready for marriage, don't be the haste, young girls. You want a partner. No, go and read your book. Go and learn. Go and develop yourself. Stop looking for a partner. You don't need a partner now. In fact, this church, you have many partners and many friends. Thank God for our young, uh, our young brothers, our young sisters, for the healthy relationship in this church. Can somebody say amen to that? Because some time ago, I went to the, uh, the praise team. You know, praise team made of beautiful sisters, beautiful girls. And I said... How many of you here have God in your life? How many of you are filled with the Spirit? And no, I didn't ask them if they were saved. Because of the virtues, because of the upbringing, because of the grace of God upon the lives of these young, young girls. And they all lifted their hands and said they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, I wasn't surprised because, and that's when you find them stand out to minister, you find a demonstration the release of the power of God through their ministry, through their services. We pray for more of that. I said we pray for more of that. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody shout amen? We conserve our energy to win the lost. Our young ones in this church are not deflecting, are not making us leak resources to, in terms of managing them and their Christian lives. They live for God. Can I hear you say live for God? They love God. Can I hear you say love God? They serve God. Can I hear you say serve God? So we can concentrate on winning the lost. I pray that the Lord will give us more of this in Jesus' name. As I pray that the Lord will give us more of this in Jesus' name. If you are happy about that, say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's such a big, big, big blessing. And we see here, you know, at times, the process, the process, the process to greatness, the process of that training process needs patience. And the, our young ones need to be made to understand at times things in life take a process and they need to wait, wait for certain things, prioritize things, very, very important. Today we see many young people even when they cannot pay their bills, they want iPhone. What's the latest iPhone now? iPhone 15. iPhone 15. Ah, huh? Pro Max. iPhone 15 Pro Max. And they are willing, they are ready. Then you see them, they want to go and work because they want to get an iPhone. They want to go and work, not because, you know, they want to work because they want to buy. Not, and depriving themselves of their significant time for studying their their. their their books, studying in their schools. They want to go and work. And in this nation, from high school students work. I, I've never seen that before. You go to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, you see these young kids, they are all working. And you see they carry very big, big phones. Some time ago, and I see that uh, coming up in the family, I said uh, to the kids, okay, now we're going to dismantle one of these phones. It looks so shiny and looks so wonderful. I got one, two, three, the three of them. I took a screwdriver and I gave each one of them screwdrivers. Now let's open up the phones. We opened up the phone. We took off the LCD, the motherboard. We dismembered the phone. And I said, okay, now it's time to assemble the phone. We began to assemble the phones. It was getting to 10 p.m., uh, about 10 p.m. in the night. My wife came to me and said, please allow the children to go and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to teach them the process. Teach them. It's not enough 
to always desire these things, but have you ever thought of the fact that people use their brains thoughtfully, put these products together? Have you ever thought of the fact that you can also create something? Have you ever thought of the fact that you can also be at the giving end? You can be that model. You can be that man, that, is, that woman, that boy, that girl that's making things happen. And not just be a consumer. I will not just be a consumer. Our kids will not just be consumers. In our kids, greatness will be manifest in Jesus' name. I say in our kids, greatness will be manifest in Jesus' name. So there's some things you just demonstrate. And so when next, the see a phone, they're a little <laughs> thoughtful. They can think about the technology that, that is behind that. They can think about the science behind that. Pray the Lord will help us. Give us wisdom in Jesus' name. I say, I pray the Lord will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. If this particular son understood what it meant to make wealth, the process, the sweating, the organization, what it, it takes to climb for the father to have had so much, it would have been much more difficult for him to have in a haste. Say, just give it to me. The Bible says here, look at that place again, the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. The younger, and he happens to be the younger of, the, of them, said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Look at the sense of entitlement. Well, he deserves it. And he divided all to them his living. Can I hear everybody? Now, the young people in the house, I want you to read this, verse 13. Young people in the house, I want you to read loud. And uh, verse 13, everybody. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and did what? And took his journey into a far country. Is that not what some of you are already thinking about doing? When it comes to choice of university, choice of college. You, have you had, they said, so you're in the uh, East Coast and the child said, I'm going to West Coast. I want to go to California. I want to free myself from the grip of parents. I want to be a man and be that I want to be that grown person. I want, and they cut themselves off from fellowship. They cut themselves off from the fellowship of the family. They make it difficult for parents to actually be there for them, to help them out, to visit them. And as soon as they get there, resources of grace squandered, hard-earned resources wasted. In fact, it's going to take your parents uh, traveling so far away, I mean, spending so much to get to you. Thousands are squandered on flight. Not that there are no good schools around here. Not that there are no scholarships around here. But you've chosen to go to a far country, a far place, because you want to go and explore like this young son. The Bible says he spent everything. He didn't value those things. He spent everything. And before he knew it, he was demoted. He said, feed himself. Feed himself with what belonged to animals. But thanks be to God. Can I ever say thanks be to God? Verse 17. Everybody read with me verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. You will not perish in Jesus' name. Verse 18, everybody said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against thee, against heaven, I mean to say, and before thee. Verse 19, everybody, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great while Way, great way off, I mean to say. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and did what? Gave him a fist bump. What did the father do? Gave him a knockout. What did the father do? The father did what? <laughs> the father did not kiss him. What a reception. Can I even say what a reception? The father said unto his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring 
he the, the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be and be merry praise the lord so let us eat and be what and be merry the father celebrated him the father forgave him the father in this passage led by example set the tone of forgiveness he provided a stage for a soft landing for this work of redemption to be fulfilled and you can do the same in your home when we forgive quickly and sincerely, we teach our children the importance of grace and mercy. Can I hear everybody say grace? Grace and mercy. The father sought forgiveness. Now, look at how did the father seek for forgiveness. And he taught forgiveness. How did he do that? The elder brother was getting offended, was getting upset. And the father, what did the father say? Maybe you should just look at that place. Look at that place. That's in Luke chapter 15. Verse 25. Read with me verse 25, everybody. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the father, to the, to the house, he heard music and dancing. Verse 26, everybody. And he called one of the servants and asked, What these things mean? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. Turn to your neighbor and say, your house will be a place of safety. They did not hear you very well. Tell your neighbor, your house will be a place of safety. Tell them your family will be a place of safety. Now finish it up. Tell them that your family will be a place of soundness. You know what that means? Your family will not be an insanity center. Where people lose their emotions, where people lose their control and temper. And the woman will rather stay at work than come back home. Or maybe you are the wife, you make the family, uh, the man stays away. The children don't even want to come home. But we see here safety and soundness. Safety, soundness is coming back to our family in Jesus' name. And this child would have been angry. He says, and he, verse 28, he was angry. I will not go in. Therefore came his father out and did what? And entreated him. We're looking for such fathers like this. This is Father's Day. I pray the Lord will make us such fathers. With humility, he went out to meet him and entreated him. Basically says, there's no forgive. He promoted the principle of forgiveness and forbearance. He entreated him, brought him inside. And uh, he, did, he said, and he answered said to his father, Lo, this many years I, I have also served thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandments, and yet thou never givest me a kid that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as, thy, this, this, as, soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, and has killed for him the fatted calf, and he said unto him, uh, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. I pray your family will be a place of merriment and gladness in Jesus' name. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. We declare today that all our children that are spiritually dead will come alive again in Jesus' name. All our children that have been lost will be recovered in Jesus' name. We see the Father's posture mirrors the attributes of Christ. Romans 5, 8 tells us, But God commended his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The life of Jesus was a testament to the boundless forgiveness of God. He forgave those that crucified him. Look at Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. You know, Galatians 3, 13 tells us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The Bible tells us clearly, Hebrews 9.22, And almost all things are by law purged. And whoso, uh, without the shedding of blood, is no remission of sin. Christ 
made the ultimate sacrifice, laid his life down, put his life on, uh, down at stake to redeem man from sin. He paid the price for man to be redeemed. He forgave us for our trespasses. He shed his blood. He gave everything that he had to bring us back to the Father. And the Father with open arm is, of course, receive, a recipient, a receptive, I mean to say, of those that return to him. You know, the Bible tells us, he that covers his sins, he will not prosper. But whoso confesseth, forsaken them, will have mercy. This son gave up everything. He did not hide, and the Lord received him. The Father received him the same way God receives us. I pray that will be emulated in our families, will be replicated in our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach your children to embrace forgiveness. Embracing forgiveness is not a sign of weakness. The father went out and entreated the elder son. I mean, culturally, now come to your neighbor and say, forget that culture for now. And embrace the Bible. You know, there are cultures where the father never says uh, he's sorry for anything. How many of you know that, have read about that culture? Raise your hand if you've read about that culture. Oh, sorry, you experience the culture. The father can, he can do like this and like this, just not to, you know, just not to say that, to entreat or to say so. And it's as if it's a sign of weakness. But well, even if you don't want to say sorry, but you can still, I mean, there are ways to teach how to do it. But Christ, we see here, laid his life, he put his life on his, he came down low. And just to win us. I pray that we will come down low to win our families in Jesus' name. It's not to surrender your headship, surrender your, the, the, the administration of the family. It's not to surrender and, be, and tell the children the, uh, and allow the children to do anything. No, no, not talking about that. We're talking about demonstrating the life of Christ, the forbearance of Christ, demonstrating the forgiveness of Christ just to make peace reign. I pray we will emulate Christ in Jesus' name. Before we pray, we look at uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Question, what happens on your, at your dinner table? Or you lost it. You took it away. You, there's no dinner. You, 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 in fact, you left you allow the dinner table to be carried away. What happens at your dinner table? Well, I ask that because even Jesus here, we see in Matthew 26, 23, he had opportunity to dine with the disciples and reflect with the disciples and actually reveal areas in need of correction, reveal areas in need of attention in the lives of the disciples. Let's look at Matthew 26, verse 23. And when the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is he I? Verse 23, everybody read with me. Matthew 26, 23. And he answered and said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. We see here the Lord, while dining with his family, posted a sense of belonging and unity, reflected fellowship, and provided a platform for interaction within the family. We see what's fellowship. What is fellowship? Fellowship is the sharing of life with others, characterized by mutual support, encouragement, and unity. It involves coming together to share in our faith, joy, and burdens of life. Jesus built a very close fellowship with his disciples, teaching them, sharing meals with them, praying with them. He demonstrated that 
true fellowship involves sharing life and supporting one another. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, I read verse 32. The Bible says, And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. The place of fellowship is a place of opportunities, where opportunities are created for interaction. The place of fellowship is a place where there can be open communication with one another. Your environment is fostered if it's receptive, if it's well prepared, if it's well used. It can be a place where there's openness. And everybody shares their feelings, their thoughts, and concerns. A place of fellowship is a place where each person can grow in the faith. You can impact the faith of a family. Let's reset our communication styles. Let's, like I, I said earlier, we read, I've read about that culture of aggression. Maybe some of you went through it. And a very aggressive culture. Everybody's hostile. Communication is hostile. Everybody's, uh, you don't want to do that. You're going to actually harden. You harden the family where people can just not just talk to one another. And we're not talking about doing the things of God, commanding the children to love God, commanding the children to, after the way of God. We're talking about aggression manifest. It's a culture where everything is aggressive. Everything, there's a whole of aggression. And then you come to America, there are things even outside of a Christian fold. You find a very a cautious place, a place where courtesy is so important. The ones serving you at the restaurant, you treat them with courtesy. You thank them. You leave a little tip. Appreciating what they have done, what they did. The American culture promotes, promotes that recognition of every type of work. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your degree or certificate you recognize. Can anybody say recognize? And our Father in the Lord, this, of course, the past Bible study spoke uh, elaborately on this. No discrimination, where we value one another, where there's no favoritism, we jettison that from the family. As we do that, our families will be healthy in Jesus' name. Our families will not be threatened in Jesus' name. You build mutual support. You celebrate together. Don't be like me. I even forget my own bad day. But I think my family, they would, uh, you can forget your bad day if you like. But our own, don't what? So you have on bad days, I said, today is your bad day. Really? You know, because of uh, the way we've <laughs> been through, every day is birthday, right? Every day is a day to celebrate. And, but if your family values it, celebrate the goodness of God. Have special moments. Now, turn to your neighbor and say, have special occasions. Have special days. Mark special occasions. Tell them, mark special occasions. Mark achievements with joy and gratitude. Re and use those moments to reinforce the values of, of the Bible, the values of the family. Try, do that. And you realize that your family will love you even better in Jesus' name. They will love you better in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we pray, there's a saying that a family that prays together does what? A family that does what? Prays together does what? Let's rise up on our feet. We're going to pray together. A family that prays together stays together, stays together, stays together. Prays together. Bind us. Together, Lord, bind us together with joy and love. Broken, bind us, bind us, bind us together in love. Bind us, bind us. Bind us with cords that cannot be bruised. Bind us together. Bind us 
Together, Lord, bind us. Together in long. Sing with me. Bind us. Bind us. With cords that cannot be broken. Bind us. Bind us together. Bind us together in love. Sing it. Bind us. Bind us. together in love. I want you to pray that the Lord will bind your family together. Bind your family with a cord that cannot be broken. Tell the Lord to bind. To give you the grace. To forgive. Forbearance is the ability to endure difficulties and show patience and restraint. Even when dealing with faults and mistakes of others, Pray for the grace to practice forbearance. Pray for the grace to be patient. Pray for the help of the Spirit. my brother or sister who sins against me so up to seven times Jesus said I tell you not seven times but 70 times seven you know what that means it's talking about the boundless the boundless mercy tell the Lord that everything that has bound you and made you restricted in terms of exercising mercy that the Lord will remove those limits and help you to live life simply, simple, straightforward, honest, transparent. Tell the Lord to give you the grace, the grace, the grace, the strength. That you not be like this unmerciful servant who was forgiven but as soon as he leaves the creditor he found a debtor someone who was indebted to him and was wicked the Lord will give you the grace to replicate the life of Christ in your family family pray the Lord will reveal it to you as a father forgiveness involves letting go of resentment and offering mercy just as Christ has forgiven us pray say Lord give me the grace to freely forgive whoever whether it's your relative your uncle your auntie your mother-in-law your father-in-law whoever is offended you that God will give you the grace and in doing it the children can learn from you the family can learn from you as a father 
that you will not give room for unforgiveness, for animosity. Pray for the help of God. The Lord is building us. The Lord is building a temple. The Lord is building a church. He's building lives in this place. Say, Lord, I want to be built by you. Built by you. Built in your courtyard. mercy towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us no matter what that man that woman that boy that girl is done to you make up your mind and say God I am ready to let go and let God He shed his blood. He gave up himself. He made sacrifices. Just to give us a soft landing. To help us not to cover our sins. But to confess them and forsake them. Knowing that he's not going to ridicule us. Knowing that he's going to accept us. There's room at the table. There is a space for you at the table, the Father's table. There's a seat for you at the table, the Father's table. Do we celebrate ourselves in our successes much more than we pinpoint faults pinpoint shortcomings you know it does take resources and energy to build a healthy family tell the Lord that you're willing to pay the price you're willing to pay the price you're gonna pay the price it does take time effort to raise a family tell the Lord you're willing you're willing to do it even as Jesus labored on us, even as God labored on us to bring us back to the Father, to bring us back to God. Tell the Lord on this day that the nation is so intentional about, for, about fathers, that you as a father will make a mark, will make a difference, will make a difference for your family. You're going to create opportunities for fellowship, devotion, you will reset your communication style. You will encourage support. And as a family, you want to pray that the Lord will give you the grace to support your father, to support your parents, even as they do their best for you. If you shut the door, others will open their door. Strangers will open their door. And that child will migrate into another place where it might become difficult for recovery. Say, so Lord, you make our families a place of restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Do you know that church, for we people of faith, church actually begins from the family. Fellowship begins from the family. It doesn't start, it's not the reverse. Fellowship begins from the family. You're going to tell the Lord, cause vibrancy to come within my family. Cause health to come within my family. Cause the Christ-like type of fellowship to come within my family. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there be any family where there's hurt, where there's something not in place, going wrong. We pray that Father, you will cause that family to be restored.
the Bible will be studied in our families. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Before we conclude, if you are a father in the house and your family is with you, I know we're everywhere. We're everywhere. I just want, let's just do this. I want all our fathers, just take a moment to, to pronounce blessings upon your family. No matter the wrongs that you've experienced. I want fathers, all our fathers, let's come out, please. Let's come out. Fathers, now you're... You represent fathers also. Fathers, potential fathers too. Fathers. Fathers in the house. Let's come forward. Your families are represented in this place. I want you to face the congregation. You can spread, set, uh, stretch your hands and pronounce blessings. Pronounce blessings. Pronounce blessings. Tell the Lord to cause his face to shine upon every family represented in this church. Tell the Lord to cause his face, his goodness to come upon every family represented in this church. Pronounce blessings, pronounce blessings. Pray. such a family let's pray more courageously more boldly pray that the activity of the walks of the, of the devil of the activity of the kingdom of darkness will be halted in our families in the name of Jesus Christ you are the head of the family God has put you there for a purpose to instill discipline to instill direction to direct to guide to ensure that things are in order in that family you're going to pray every resistance every resistance set up by the devil the Lord will bring them down the power of the Lord will destroy them. In the name of Jesus. And if that if the enemy has crawled in, pray that the Lord would dislodge every works of darkness. Get them out in Jesus' name. your way in our families have your rightful place in our families take away the culture of aggression from our families take away the culture of insubordination in the family in any family where children spouse are disrespecting the heads we pray that Lord you will turn things around you will convict such you will touch the hearts of every member of that family to uh, have a surrendered life to Christ, a yielded life to Christ, and honor God in, their, in the head of a family in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, that all the rebellion that is out there in the society will not come into these families. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that, Lord God, you will have your rightful place in our families. Prayer will be restored in our families. The love of Christ will be evident in our families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, 
We pray in any family where there's contention, family where there's, oh God, resistance, and this is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness. We're praying that, Lord, you will bulldoze them in Jesus' name. Be exalted in our families, oh God. We pray in any family where there's no cooperation. We pray going forward from today, you will bring healing and cure to such families in Jesus' name. We pray in any family where maybe one person has put their hand in something that has given the devil a legal ground into such family. We are praying that today, let such be exposed, let darkness be driven out, and let the light of God permeate that family in Jesus' name. We pray that a stranger, strange people, strange personalities, strange activities, strange seeds, strange mechanisms, oh God, in place that God has not planted, strange trees that our Heavenly Father has not planted, be hewn down in Jesus' name. The peace of our families will translate to the peace of the church. We declare the peace of God upon every family represented here today in Jesus' name. Where there's crisis and conflict, we declare today, come to an end in Jesus' name. Where there are partitions, where there are divisions, we are praying that Father be crushed, crushed away in Jesus' name. Let the love of God bring down every wall of division. Let the peace of God flow through. Let the power of God be manifest in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift up our fathers, O oh God. Lift up our mothers, O oh God. Lift up our children, O oh God. Set them on high, O oh God. Make them godly examples in Jesus' name. We pray from today we begin to support one another. We pray from today we begin to walk in love. We begin to walk hand in hand to get this family project done in the name of Jesus. Our children will be for signs and wonders, oh God. Our children will not be an embarrassment to the kingdom of God, oh Lord. We have seen, oh God, how this younger son went into riotous living and brought shame and disgrace to, to the father. But the father didn't give up. The father was expectant. The father was longing. The father was praying. The father was looking up for the return of this child. We're praying that every child has gone away, gone away, oh God, into darkness. We pray darkness, give up our children in Jesus' name. We say, give up our children in Jesus' name. Every womb of darkness that swallowed them up, give them up in Jesus' name. Father, we pray wherever they are, you convict them. Those have gone away, oh Lord, convict them. Gone away from faith, bring them back, oh God, in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, you keep the enemy from touching them. Wherever they are, Lord, we pray you shield, you shield them, oh God. And restore them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. They will arise and come back home. Thank you, everlasting Father, for you've had us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Church, what will you do for to our Father? Can you celebrate them? As they go back to their seat, celebrate them, celebrate them celebrate them these are men of valor men of courage amen 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 pray the lord will continue to lift up our fathers up higher and higher in jesus name you never go down you won't go down in jesus name you stand in courage and fulfill destiny your family in jesus name Amen. Praise the Lord. We've come to the end of the service. Before we share the grace,
so these ones have graduated. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord. I know, bro, Joseph is, uh, is not uh, that younger son that we talked about, right? He's going next door here, College Park, right? You've made up your mind, College Park. Let's celebrate. Amen. So don't just hide yourself. Don't hide your, uh, just put your head into the book and we'll still see you in fellowship, right? Praise God. We have a good sense of balance. The Lord will help you. You prosper in that which you're going to do in Jesus' name. En engineering field. So uh, it looks like good musicians make good engineers, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see here, we celebrate the goodness of God. This is our brother, brother Joseph, always here serving the Lord. And, and we have every cause to celebrate God in his life. He's not failing. He's done, he does his best here. He gives his life. He's giving his all. And we bless God for lifting you up. That program you've in, uh, actually gone into, you were excelling it in Jesus' name. We'll be proud of you in Jesus' name. I will celebrate you more and more in Jesus' name. We also see our sister always behind the scene uh, doing incredible things for the Lord. There are some people, they are like secret, doing incredible things. You know, those people that you, those people that you don't see, you don't see that things are happening because of their presence. I think they are, more, they are very powerful. What do you think about that? You know, people, they're not, bring, they're not on this pulpit, they're not on the stage, but they are behind the scene, pressing buttons and getting service, the service running, week in, week out. Can we celebrate the goodness of God? Praise the Lord! Sister Eunice, we thank God for the, His grace upon your life, for helping you to graduate. Now... Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate uh, Joseph uh, Sese, Brother Mahmoud's uh, son as well. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a clap offering. He also got admitted to UMD, Cyber Security Program. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think a, a couple of weeks ago, I, I know you were driving to West Virginia, but it's like... Uh, <laughs> The, the GPS took you to West Virginia. I hope you, you, you greeted the mayor of West Virginia. And then uh, you told them, I'm going back to Maryland. Now we have them back here. Of course, it's going to be <laughs> UMD. You're Maryland College Park. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, those who also graduated from their master's program, uh, they are, we are going to, where are they? Master's program, you just finished for, uh, your master's program. Can you just wave your hand? Master's program. I can see. You. Now, you are, come, you are, now come in front of the camera now. Don't, now leave the camera and just come in front. You will never see him. Can somebody say amen? Uh, we thank God for his grace upon the life of our brother. God has lifted him up significantly. And uh, I, I mean, I can't, his life speaks. One of those areas that, of work in the church that nobody wants to go to. He came, comes up and says, Pastor, I want to be cleaning the church. Cleaning the church. And how many of you see him week in, week out, always vacuuming, cleaning, cleaning the bathrooms, clean everywhere no wonder God has lifted you up we pray the Lord will continue to lift you up in Jesus name amen let's rise up and just uh, just spread our hands towards them and say God we pray you continue to lift them up you continue to lift them up lift them up from glory to glory take them higher take them higher now let me end by saying whatever you're desiring for yourself pray that into your own life whatever you're desiring God to do for you now speak that into their own life speak that into their own life
a wife. Tell the Lord to give him a wife. That he will not walk by sight. For Sister Eunice, she has the heart of a mother. She loves children. She's pursued a career in that area. Let's pray, Lord, we expand her coast. Give her a tenderness to grow in that ministry. For Joseph, that the engineering department he's entering will not be too difficult for him. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you all. We celebrate you. Let's go. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know we've spent a longer time, but, you know, once in a while, I just want to um, give our pastor the opportunity to just say a few words to uh, the church. And after that, uh, I believe there, one of our sisters, how many of you know Sister Rachel? Sister Rachel. Rachel Fiedler. She's been a, a vibrant member of this church, but during COVID, uh, uh, she was impacted significantly, which affected her ability to, to make motion. So she's been uh, bedridden for quite a long time since then. But she connects with us in fellowship every Sunday. And she said, I'm still part of fellowship. And can you all give me the opportunity of saying hello to the fellowship on Zoom? Is she, is she on Zoom? She's on Zoom. So she wants to say hello to the church from the hospital. There. Sister Rachel, the church, is, the church celebrates you. We thank God for his grace upon your life, and they are listening to you. Can we uh, spotlight her and... Does she want to show her video or camera or something? She's sought for this day. She wants to just say hi to the church. So we're going to give her that opportunity. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because of the situation, she's not able to uh, use her hands to unmute or, and basically, and uh, she will need somebody. It looks like nobody's attending to her where she is now to do that real fast. Uh, but we're still going to create this opportunity for her to give her the opportunity of just saying hello to the, uh, to the church. And if you have some time, uh, we can provide the address at your own time. You can go and visit her in the hospital as well. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will continue to keep her and sustain her in Jesus' name. Rachel, we love you. We pray the Lord will continue to keep you, preserve you. His grace will be evident in your life. Uh, even in that uh, limitation, the Lord will build you in Jesus' name. I will pray that the healing touch of God will be manifest in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, before we share the grace, Pastor Enoch, uh, let's welcome Pastor Enoch just to, I mean, he's been with us for some time and just wants to appreciate the church and say words, some few words of encouragement to, to the church. Praise the Lord. 
brethren, um, it's a great privilege and honor for me, uh, my wife and I, and my entire family, um, to be in the DC church here, actually. Before I say more words, the love and care of this church to my family reverberated right back in Nigeria very clearly. And we are so humbled um, that this church could do this for my family. And thank God, before my daughter came here, my wife, the church took it up to accommodate my daughter, Esther Enoch. And the church did not know the burden they lifted off from her shoulder. What it was going to be every month. It was in thousands of dollars every month. Thank you very much, and God bless you. And not only that, when we arrived uh, DC here, the first day we stepped into this church, yes, by the grace of, based on my work, I have little privilege of, you know, getting to a few other places to worship, both in Nigeria and outside Nigeria in churches. But when I stepped in here, my wife and I, they warmed the fellowship, the presence of the Spirit of God, and what I refer to as inclusivity, of the children, the youth, the white people, every, a very dynamic fellowship. It's, nobody will come to DC church and we say he or she is not blessed by the Spirit of God. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. I think, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Now, coming back to the issue on ground, um, Pastor, thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And please, the greetings of my wife and I and the entire family to the region of us here. Uh, being a pastor, I'm aware of the burden of responsibility. And I prefer that he stays there to do the work of God and be here because you guys are doing great work here. May God bless him over there in Jesus' name. Amen. And for information, Pastor, he has spoken with us. He's spoken with me um, on the issues and all that. So please, uh, greeting for us if it doesn't meet us around here. But please, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. The children are so wonderful. The youth are too fantastic. The, the young professionals, they are so fantabulous. And the adult papas and mamas, oh, there are something else we can't quantify. We want to thank you from the gifts I saw. I mean, coming to the house where we stay, from registry, without exaggeration, I have not seen that amount of gift in a wedding before this time. I've not seen it. I've not seen it. Maybe because I'm not in the U.S. here, but I think I'm not sure. Thank you very much for your love and support. What about the cash gifts? Still coming, even after the wedding. Thank you very much. And then what about 
the program itself. What about the program itself? Every one of you engrossed in the program will enjoy with ecstasy as if it's a personal program. Brethren, without missing words, we cannot thank you enough. All we have to is to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um. Our greatest prayer, our greatest prayer, as have been emphasized in the church and in the messages, that in all of this, may Christ keep us worthy to make his kingdom and rejoice in his kingdom in Jesus' name. The young adults saw the pastor. I have a little flair for them. All those of you who are waiting for your husbands and your wives. We brought that talk back as a point. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> as a point of contact. Say amen, brother, now. Amen. We pastor talk, bro. Oh, I say pastor. As point of contact. And the best lady that day after the reception was almost over, the best lady was just digging dance. Yeah, how many of you saw her? She was just dancing, and something told me, God will visit that lady. Yeah. So, I pray for all of you, and I mean from the depth of my heart, may the Almighty God visit the young adults in particular in Jesus' name. Amen. And give you the very best in your life. And may God preserve us, like I said before, that we make God's kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you for the privilege. I appreciate it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know behind every successful man is a successful woman, right? Well, Let's celebrate our, our mother as well. Let's celebrate her, Mama Enoch. Amen. Thank you for supporting, Pastor. I was told Rachel is ready to... I... I am one. Rachel, go ahead and just... The church is listening I to you. Happy Father's Day. Are you hear me? Happy Father's Day. Hi, everyone. Nice to talk to you all. I don't hear anybody talking back. Happy Father's Day, everyone. You can go ahead. You were saying something. Go ahead, Richard. I say Happy Father's Day, everyone. I don't know if all you hear me. You hear me? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Richard. We trust in God. Even though you are not here with us in person, fellowship, we. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Where we trust that the fellowship will continue with Rachel, even the spirit. We'll keep praying for her. Please let's pray for her that the Lord will visit her in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Habat, over to you so I can just the Lord. Let's give it all to the Lord Jesus. Let's give it all to him. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you may be seated. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day, awesome day in the presence of the Lord. And like David said, and we key into that pronouncement that we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of our lives forever and ever. 
So I don't think we wasted time today. It was, a, I mean, a great time in the presence of the Lord. And we pray that all the time we've invested today, the Lord will reward us abundantly, super abundantly in Jesus' name. Before we share the grace, the media team, they have a throwback um, from the previous Father's Day editions um, prior years. So media team, are you ready before we share the grace? the day that you found me and at the right time you opened my eyes to see oh. it feels like heaven heaven on earth with you with you i'm living in the wonders of your love oh god your love is just the greatest Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise as we share the grace in fellowship? So, the brothers, there's a big treat waiting for you downstairs. So, as soon as we are done here, all roads lead to the basement beside the children's church. Amen. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? The grace, one, two, three, go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray that the Lord will give us a wonderful week this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.